Welcome back to Leeds Lately. Before we get into this video, if you could just hit that subscribe button down below because we're trying to hit 6,000 subs before the season starts and I think we can do it. Today's video though is about someone we have mentioned before in videos, but someone we're going to take a much deeper dive on. And this is part of a three-part series uh, where I fully go in on a scouting report uh, for you Leeds fans out there to see what these players who we've been linked with would actually do at Leeds United and how they would fit into our system. Now, the first one we're going to do is Joel Perot. Then in the next couple of days, you're going to see a Ryan Manning one and a Gustavo Hamer one, because I think those three players are the ones that we desperately need to get to uh, to try and push for this promotion back to the Premier League. So let's start with the basics about Joel Perot then. Now, Joel Perot is 23 years old. He's currently at Swansea City. Um, his market value is 10 million euros and his nation is the Netherlands. He is about six foot tall, just over. Um, he's left footed and he plays up front for Swansea City. Now, he has had an excellent, excellent season and actually a really good couple of seasons for Swansea. Last season, he got uh, 19 goals and two assists. And the season before that, he got 22 goals and six assists. Now, in the video the other day, I mentioned how his XG last season just gone was 18.5. And he actually outperformed that by scoring 19 goals. When you look at 21-22 season in the championship for Joel Perot at Swansea... His XG was 12.5 and he scored 22 goals. He actually outscored his XG by nearly 10 goals, which is absolutely ridiculous. And it's the sort of clinical finishing that we actually really need at Leeds United. It's what we've lacked with Bamford over the last couple of years. And we will go into that a little bit as well uh, later on in the video. Um, so his pass completion is something that I wanted to look at as well, because I think... Leeds really need somebody who can hold the ball up and bring other players into play. And we're going to do some a little bit of analysis on some of his uh, goals and assists actually later on in the video as well. Um, but for now, let's have a look at the statistics. So his comp his pass completion is 81.5%. Now for a striker in uh, similar leagues who've played a similar amount of minutes to him, that puts him in the 96th percentile. So he is in the top 4% of strikers in all those leagues. Um, in terms of pass completion. So he's really accurate with his short passes, with his little interplays in the attacking third. And when we go further into that, you'll see on the screen now, passes completed per 90, 20.34. That puts him in the 90th percentile. He's attempted a lot of passes as well, 77th percentile. Uh, we've talked about his pass completion, uh, 96th percentile. His passing distance as well, um, he's high up as well because he drops deep sometimes, gets the ball and sprays those balls out um, progressively as well because he's also the 80th percentile for progressive passing distance so you can have you uh, pause it now if you like and have a look at some of the other stats in there but you can see there's a lot of green there um, and and he has made a lot of passes and attempted a lot of passes and he's done really well really well at it for a striker usually you don't expect to see these kind of numbers for a striker that's why everything's in the green that's why he's so high up in the percentiles um you don't usually get this kind of play from a striker so it's something rare and something that Leeds could really do with adding to the repertoire I think it would be an excellent excellent addition to have somebody up front who can not only bang in goals clinically um but he's also able to hold the ball up and, and um, bring other players into play as well. And we will go into that in a minute. The other thing before we go on to the actual analysis of some of his goals is his shot accuracy. Now, his shot accuracy last season, the last 365 days, is 41.4%. Now, to contextualise that a little bit, Bamford's is 33.33%. So, um, Perot's got over 7% more um, shot accuracy and that's obviously shots that go on target to shots that completely miss the goal and we know that Bamford's bad in front of goal but there is a gulf there um, and Joel Perot gets his shots on target a lot more a lot more of the time um, the final thing we're going to go on to then is actual analysis of his goals and this is the bit where you sort of see how 
somebody like Joel Perot who would actually fit into uh, Daniel Farker's system. And I've got some perfect examples of that to show you now. So apologies for it being a little bit blurry, but these are just taken from uh, YouTube compilations um, to sort of analyze how these goals have happened. Um, so if you look at the first one, um, you've got Joel Perot there. He's just received the ball from a midfielder with his back to goal. And he is gets his head up quickly he looks and he sees that this player as well the only other Swansea player you can actually see in the shot there uh, which makes it easy for me um, he sees him making a run and he slots the pass right through that gap just where he needs to he goes through and he goes through on goal and he's brought down by the QPR player and they win a penalty but this is what I was talking about in my tactical analysis video of um, Daniel Farker's system is that somebody like Joel Pro would be ideal because he would drag defenders out and allow that number 10 that attacking midfielder from in behind to run past um, and exploit those gaps that he's created which is exactly what's happened here this striker here whether that be Emmanuel Dennis maybe um, but for Norwich it was uh, Timu Puki um, he was what's called a blindside striker and he would try to obviously get in the blind side get in the blind spot of these defenders and make runs which would then make room for somebody like the attacking midfielder here which could have been Emi Buendia or one of those other attacking midfielders that Norwich possessed at the time um, to make a run through the middle really really good piece of play there from Joel Perot um, able to hold the ball up get his head up and per play the perfect pass as well which I think could be really really important for Leeds the second scenario we're going to do is this one here where Joel Perot pulled out to the right wing because that's uh, where the ball came. So he pulled out there and he's going to try and come from out to in. Um, but again, he gets his head up. He looks and he sees that other play, the player right in the center of your picture. Um, as we go into the next slide, he is made that run all the way into the box and Joel Perot has picked him out and the player is able to get a shot off on goal. Um, so Joel Perot's not selfish either. He will peel out wide. He will be happy to receive the ball, wait for a third man runner from midfield to go past him and then play that ball into the box for that player to have a shot. And that is something that Daniel Farker would absolutely love about Joel Perot um, because that's exactly how he wants to play. This is what Timu Puki did um, for Norwich in Daniel Farker's system as well. Timu Puki would pull out wide or he would play on the blind side of the defender. He would create space um, for the number 10 to run in behind or one of those wide midfielders as well. Uh, one more situation. Um, uh, this time, it's Joel Perot making the run into the box. Um, the player who's actually got the ball is going to try and lift it over those defenders right through that big gap you can see between the centre-back and the left-back there. Uh, Joel Pro sees that, makes an excellent run, gets past everybody, and you can see he's just about to receive the ball. And when he does, he gets it down and he volleys it into the back of the net and it's clinical, clinical finishing. And that's exactly what you want to see from a striker. The way he's able to see that gap, know exactly where he wants to go, um, call for it, receive it and score um, is absolutely excellent. Clinical, clever, making a blindside run between the, the fullback and the centre-back, exactly where you want your striker to be making his runs. Really good ball into him, bit of quality, and then he finishes it off really, really nicely. So... I think those attributes are really what would sell this move to somebody like Daniel Farker. He would look at him and say, OK, well, this is actually going to fit my system really, really well um, because of the way that Joel Perot plays football and the way that he, um, he utilises his body, the way he makes his runs as a striker in the championship. He's been absolutely brilliant. And I think it would be an excellent move for Leeds. It's a no brainer to put a bid in for him um, and see what we can get. Um, but yeah, that has been the first part of this three-part series. That is Joel Perot analysed. Hope you've enjoyed it. If there's any other questions you have, put them down in the comments below and any other general leads chit-chat. As always, uh, happy to respond in the comments below. Thanks for watching this one and look out for another one tomorrow.